Okay, this is a quick video to illustrate how we use the Topoisomerase 2 drug screening kit uh, for drug discovery. And this is a plasmid-based kit, and it's catalog number 1009 on our website, uh, and it comes in two sizes. The kit is sold without enzymes, so you'll have to order the enzymes separately. This slide shows uh, an overview of the topoisomerase 2 reaction mechanism with a plasmid. Uh, Topo 2 binds DNA in a scanning mode and it will search for uh, an affinity binding site uh, and it will engage the supercoil DNA in a relaxation reaction to produce fully relaxed DNA. In the presence of uh, so-called interfacial poisons, which we call IFP, which is illustrated over here, interfacial poison, the uh, enzyme enters into a covalent topoDNA intermediate where the protein is actually covalently bonded uh, to the break site. And this is a stabilized double-strand break. When you add SDS to that, uh, it traps the enzyme uh, in a protein DNA intermediate like this. Now in the presence of proteinase K shown here, which is a step, and we provide the proteinase K in the assay. This generates linear DNA, which is diagnostic for interfacial poisoning, which is basically inhibiting the resealing step in the reaction. Now, shown below is the reaction without drug, and you can see that the uh, PHOT1 DNA is fully relaxed, and there are no discontinuities or are no breaks. You degrade the free TOPO2 with uh, proteinase K, and this generates relaxed uh, circular topoisomers, we, we call, and these are the normal reaction products as indicated here. Now, another class of uh, drug will be a CIC, which stands for a catalytic inhibitory compound, and inhibitors simply block activity of the enzyme, uh, and that's illustrated here, where you lose the ability to relax the, the DNA totally. When you run these reactions, you're going to either do a non-EB gel or an ethidium bromide gel, and I thought it would be a good idea to show you what a non-EB gel, a typical result, looks like. So shown are some different species of DNA in the reaction products. Now these are standard 1% agarose gels, and they do not have any kind of uh, intercalator in the gel or running buffer. Supercoil DNA typically uh, breaks down into a supercoiled DNA substrate here, and a small amount of nicked open circular DNA shown here. Uh, you'll notice there is no linear DNA in the substrate. Uh, we always include a linear DNA marker, which is shown here, simply uh, cutting with a restriction enzyme pHa1. In the presence of uh, topo2, with no other drug additions, you get these topoisomer, this typical ladder effect. And in this case, you can see these bands uh, correspond to various relaxed uh, topoisomers. Uh, the presence of VP16, which is a strong topo2 poison, is going to generate linear DNA shown here, which is the cleavage product. And that's diagnostic for a uh, reaction where the enzyme is trapped in the covalent intermediate. It's absolutely essential that you use uh, a little bit of proteinase K in this reaction to remove the protein, otherwise uh, this band will not resolve out. Now an ethidium bromide gel is, is uh, has a different picture, and I want to show you, go over this with you very quickly. The uh, supercoiled DNA and the open circular DNA migrate is shown in this first lane. Linear uh, plasmid is shown here. That's your marker cut with a restriction enzyme. And you'll see here in the, uh, with no topo and no drug, here's your supercoiled DNA plasmid. And I put it immediately next to a reaction with topo2, and you can see that the resolution is very poor between these species. Relaxed DNA moves faster in this gel system uh, than the supercoiled DNA. However, this, as before, when you add topo2 plus BP16, you generate the linear DNA, and there is uh, going to be uh, some relaxed DNA in this reaction as well. Typically, one uses ethidium bromide gels in this context to look at the mechanism and try to understand uh, you know, if there's any nicking going on, which would be an increase in nicked open circular DNA or if there's an additional increase in linear DNA shown in this position. Here's some helpful hints on using the kit that I want to go over with you very quickly. When you get the kit and the enzyme, it's a great idea 
to do a simple titration for activity. We understand that these enzymes are expensive, they're difficult to produce, and they're unstable. Uh, and we just want to make sure that the product you get is going to work for you. So it's a good idea to do a simple uh, one, two, three microliter titration of enzyme to ensure that you get good activity. Always use uh, a non-EB gel to test enzyme activity. Uh, this is because the uh, resolution of the topoisomers is diagnostic and that's a good idea to test that and get a clear result. In most other cases, we recommend actually when you test your drugs to run EB and non-EB gels. Just simply split the reactions in half and run both gel systems as shown here. Be sure you include solvent controls. This is important because DMSO and drug solvents can interfere with the enzyme. So always put a solvent control. And finally, it's essential to run a VP16 control to show that the linear DNA can be detected. Even if the yield is low, Topo2 typically will reseal efficiently and not produce any broken intermediates uh, unless uh, a poison, interfacial poison like VP16 is present. This control is absolutely essential. These are the key points to using our kit. If you have questions, you can send us your data. We'll be happy to go over the uh, your results and provide our uh, input on that. Thank you for your time.